Welcome back to The Talking Hedge. I'm Josh Kincaid, Capital Markets Analyst and host of your Cannabis Business Podcast. Today, we're going to examine a report from Headset on the impact of multi-packs on cannabis pre-roll sales. So currently, pre-roll production accounts for approximately 8% of the total cannabis sales, which makes them an important cannabis category in the study, with multi-packs making up more than a third of pre-roll sales in the U.S., it's important to examine how they have grown and how their abundance varies by both state and pre-roll segment type. So first and foremost, both pre-roll production in general and multi-packs have become increasingly more popular in the trailing 12 months broken up by quarter. The graph highlights the steady growth of pre-rolls and multi-pack sales, as well as the growing share of multi-pack sales. So over the trailing 12 months, multi-pack sales jumped from just over 47 million to over 85 million. And similarly, total pre-roll sales jumped from 125 million in the second quarter of 2019 to approximately 223 million in the first quarter of 2020. The percentage of sales that multi-packs constitute has oscillated remaining between 31 and 38%. And it's worth noting that the decrease in pre-roll sales between the fourth quarter and first quarter is due to the changing in category preferences away from inhalables due to the outbreak of the virus. Moreover, multi-pack popularity percentages vary by state and looking at states within the U.S., California has the highest percentage of multi-pack sales, accounting for over 45%. Runner-up to California is Washington at 36%, and then Oregon at 32 and then Colorado, Nevada, with less than 10% of pre-roll sales coming from multi-packs. There are similarly large disparities when we start to examine the percentage amongst seven segments of pre-roll products. Mixed strain pre-rolls, they have the highest percentage of multi-pack sales with over 75%. It's likely due to product lines that offer individual half gram joints of different strains. And in other segments, we see the lesser presence of multi-pack pre-rolls through major segments of hybrid sativa and indica, all seeing over 30% of their total sales to multi-packs. And throughout the next year, we'll expect to see the, a sustained increase in market share for multi-pack pre-rolls as consumers look to decrease their trips frequently due to social distancing. I definitely decreased the amount of blunts and inhalables in the first quarter and even second quarter, uh, whereas now in the summer, I'm kind of over it. <laughs> but I'll probably go back to that actually in the fourth quarter if uh, in the fall. If people start getting the flu and the, the virus starts increasing again, I may opt out of inhalables. So we did see that in the beginning. Uh, people just like myself, realize that things were maybe a little bit better than uh, the news was was showing it and went back to combusting. So they were hoarding flour, they were not buying pre-rolls, things are kind of going back to normal. But once flu season starts up, I expect that trend to kind of go back temporarily. Uh, but we are seeing that pre-rolls are incredibly convenient. And there are some weird things about pre-rolls where, um, you know, silent generation or white women over 50 are one of the highest buyers of edibles. And so that's an interesting demographic. Pre-rolls are huge. It's all about convenience. It's all about socializing. But right now we're seeing that's a lot less. Uh, people are buying this a lot less because they're not going out. They're not consuming. They're not going to work. Uh, they're buying more edibles. But people do want that hybrid. Uh, they want strain-specific um, strains. They want something that's going to be discerning, not just something that's swept off the floor and given to them. They want something that's going to be good. And that's kind of why I personally go after a hybrid is because I don't, I don't really trust the brands yet. There could be a sativa that's really, really uh, stony, like right behind the eyes, you know, and it's hard to have a conversation just like an indica is going to just lay you out on the couch. You know, I can't work with that either. A hybrid is going to give you the effect that you want without a lot of the detriment behind that. I think that's kind of why people are going there is because they don't have trusted brands yet. So it's, it's not really what people want. It's just what they're willing to put up with. I myself, I want bulk. Uh, that's why I buy medical by the pound uh, at $500. That's what I like. I don't want to go to the store all the time. I want it you know, organic and natural, pesticide-free, all of that, and coming from a trusted source. So that's what I'm doing. That's where I'm getting mine from. As soon as we can kind of go back to normal, we're going to see a lot more production of pre-rolls as more machines are coming online this year. I saw fourth quarter 2019, a lot of automation coming out. Obviously, the virus stalled that, but I think that pre-roll production is going to come down. So you might start seeing some mobile processing units. I might be a part of that. We'll see. Uh, I've got a call later on today, so wish me luck. With that, we're going to roll this one up. I'm Josh Kincaid. This is The Talking Hedge. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, or don't, and I'm out. Don't forget to smash that like button on your way out and check out these other videos that we've got.